What's up guys, John here. Welcome to the channel. So today we have Escaluda on the PlayStation 2. Now, is this another cave masterpiece or just an average shooter? Let's find out. Okay guys, so this is my copy of Escaluda on the PlayStation 2. Now, I probably should have said something in the description, but this will only work on a Japanese or a modded console. Um, actually, I can show you real quick, this is my Japanese PlayStation 2. I got it kind of kind of set up ghetto at work, but check this out. Look at that memory card. This is actually the one that came with the PlayStation when the, the kid that I got it from gave it to me. But it's gold, it's uh, Fuji work. I don't remember my US memory card looking so uh, quite so cool, but yeah, it's a gold memory card. It's kind of the same kind of gold you'd see on like a Zelda cart for the NES, but anyway, this is my copy of Escaluda, and I'll just say that the copy I got from the guy I got it from is in great condition. Um, look at that. I mean, just the cover art on this, it, it's so colorful, I just it might not be everybody's cup of tea, I just love the anime characters, and I think it looks really good. And it looks like this actually comes with a DVD that I'll probably end up watching on my Japanese PlayStation 2. And I actually have the disc inside of the PlayStation 2 as we speak. Um, here, I'll show you. That's what uh, Escaluda looks like. <laughs> so if you buy a disc only, that green disc, that's what you want to look for. Anyways, guys, this is my copy of Escaluda on the PlayStation 2. So to give you a little bit of background information on Escaluda, it's a vertically scrolling shooter developed by, you guessed it, Cave for the Cave IGS PGM hardware. Now this game saw an arcade release in 2003 and I believe it saw a console release that same year as well on the PlayStation 2. I'm not 100% sure on that, so if you have any information on the console release of Escaluda, let me know in the comments down below. Now according to Arcade Taku, Escaluda is the spiritual prequel to S Prade, and S Prade is this, it's this praised cave shooter that not that many people talk about, and it's actually the first game in the Escaluda series. And actually, speaking of S Prade, M2 is actually in the middle of porting over S Prade as part of their Shot Trigger series. I don't know if it's going to get a console release or just an eShop release, but I'm really looking forward to that one. As far as the menus and the interface goes, pretty simple layout. You have arcade mode, arcade simulation, gallery, and system option. Now under system options, you have your normal controls that you would hope you would have in any decent shooter. Uh, monitor settings, button config, and for this one, full auto. So you can kind of switch between the arcade style uh, version of the game and you know full auto. So I don't know why you would ever want to turn that off. But under gallery, I noticed this game has a pretty interesting gallery. It's, you know, it's nothing spectacular. But I noticed, and I noticed this in a lot of Japanese games, they have all the galleries on the games, at least the ones that I see most of them, is already unlocked. Um, you can pretty much look through all the pictures. They're available to you from the time you purchase the game. And a lot of U.S. release games, they, they make the game, they make you unlock things and do all this work to be able to see pictures. And it's just like, come on, man. Like, I understand you're trying to give the game a little bit more replay value, but I just want to see the damn picture. So, in this game, at least from what I saw, you don't have to lock anything to look through the pictures in the gallery. Now, button config and monitor setup are just like you would expect. Uh, button config, you, may, you might need to configure that if you have an arcade stick. You know, most of the times I use arcade sticks on, like, PS2, PS3, um, Xbox 360. They always have different quirks with the controller, so I always have to map the controls myself. But another cool thing is they do have Tate mode. So under the monitor setup, um, you have a few different options for Tate mode. And honestly, when I was playing with it last night, it almost made me want to flip the TV in the basement up on its side to play that way. So, you know, just a pretty cool option that they added to the game. Now let's get right into the meat and potatoes of this video, baby. Yeah, that's right, the gameplay. So for me, all the cave shooters, and I use, I'm not dick riding on cave, I mean, I just have to say cave shooter because they have a certain aesthetic, they have a certain look, they have a certain feel uh, that a lot of other companies have emulated over the years, and I just feel like they were the originators of the, some very specific bullet hell mechanics. Now, with that being said, every different cave game, at least most of them, have very similar mechanics with a different twist on that mechanic. Now, for this one, and the basis of all those mechanics, at least for me, it's going to be the Dodon Pachi games. So, this game, okay, you have your regular spread shot like you have in any shooter that you've ever played. 
Now, in most cave shooters, when you use your, your let's say, focus shot, you know, you slow down your speed, you kind of condense your, your fire towards your enemies. When you, you can do that in this game, just like any other cave game. That's not the specific mechanic. So what makes this game specific is there's a button you press on your controller, whatever you want to configure it to. And I've heard it described as your ultimate form. So we'll just use that. You change shapes, your ultimate form, your, your powered up mode, I guess, as it were. So you're powered up. Now in Dota and Pachi, you hit your, your power up button or whatever. You can slice through enemy bullets. You're pretty much not invincible, but your fire is invincible. You can do something to that extent in this game when you're powered up, although you're certainly not as invincible as you would be in a game like Dota and Pachi. But you are powered up and the enemy fire slows down when it's coming at you. And you can stay that way the whole time you play the game if you want to. Here's the interesting twist, the interesting mechanic. I guess the gimmick of this game, if you want to call it that. So there's these green gems that you collect. Now, obviously you want to get many, many, many of these gems because when you build them up and you have a few hundred of them, when you enter your powered up mode, you'll notice that the enemy fire slows down. Now, it's only going to slow down when you have gems in that gem counter. You know, you'll see them go down rapidly when you hit that powered up button or when you enter that ultimate form. Your gym, your gym count will start to drop. Now, when that happens and your gym count reaches zero, enemy fire is going to speed up at you like two, five, maybe ten times faster than it normally would, making the game very, very, very challenging. You know, I don't, I don't recommend staying in that mode when you having with with zero gems. It's really, really difficult. But you can stay powered up if you want to. So if you're that good and you want to stay powered up and power through the game. You could do that. I mean, just be prepared to dodge it lightning fast. Like, you'd have to literally be the flash in order to dodge bullets at the speed they come at you. Um, you know, this game, uh, it's got a pretty interesting take on a lot of the, the very, very uh, genre-specific cave games uh, that are out there. And I think it's a really, really cool mechanic. And it's actually, it's almost too much. Um, you know, it's definitely a, a mechanic that you want to learn. But it's, it's almost too much. I think anything more than what it already is would be, like I said, too much for the player to kind of comprehend as they're playing. Now, the other mechanic that's, um, you don't really see it in a lot of games, so you don't really have like a special, like a bomb. But what you do have in this game is you have, your special pretty much is you, you're immune to enemy fire for as long as you have that button pressed down. Now, as you're pressing that button down and as you stay immune to enemy fire, a meter goes down. As that meter goes down, you're actually charging up a shot. So as soon as you release your finger off that button, you're going to fire a huge wave of energy at your enemies. And the longer you keep it pressed down, the bigger it gets. And it gets pretty damn big. So if you keep your finger on that button for like 10 seconds or like, you know, during a, a boss fight, if you're able to dodge everything, not throw anything at the boss, but just dodge everything on the screen and keep your finger on that button, you release that bad boy and man, fuck, clap and revolve that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can really do some serious damage. So yeah, I would have to say that Escaluda has some pretty cool game mechanics, especially for a cave game. Now, as far as the sound, the sound effects, the visuals, the graphics, I mean, pretty much everything that our eyes and ears can see and hear, as far as the sound effects go, everything sounds cool. Everything that blows up sounds cool. When different things happen on the screen, it sounds great. Now, the soundtrack, although I have not sat down and gave it a good listening to yet, I've heard great things about it, and I've heard these great things from more than one person. So I'm probably going to bump that in my car on my way home soon. And if it's as good as I, they say it is, you may hear the music featured on a video of mine. So maybe that soundtrack is included on that DVD that I had that came with the game. But I doubt it. If anything, I know that's going to be posted on YouTube somewhere so I can still bump it in the old car. Now, the graphics and the visuals, I mean, it's a cave game. Need I say more? No. Okay, so it's got that pixelized artwork that we all know and love from Cave. Um, you know, everything's a sprite. Everything has that slight 3D uh, twist to it. And I would say, although all the Cave games look similar, I would say if I was to compare this to one other game that they've released, I would probably most closely relate it or compare it to Mushihima Sama Futari, uh, or I guess loosely translated uh, Insect or uh, Bug Princess. They, they look real similar. You know, the insect or bug, Mushihima Samu Futari, 
has uh, you know things that have wings and insects and um, you know dinosaurs and birds with wings. And in Escaluda, you know, you have wings. You're kind of like a fairy, and there's some slight uh, organic life uh, elements to the game, although they're very slight. Um, they just they kind of look similar, although they play they play similar as well, but they have completely different. Uh, mechanics as far as like your specials go and like I said all the cave games through that uh, twist on the on the game mechanic and this is one to add to that list of small little tweaks that they have done over the years and it's a damn shame that this game never came out in the United States now like I said you need a Japanese PS2 to play this or uh, uh, one of those uh, launch model PS3s from Japan if you don't feel like dealing with any of that uh, download RetroArch or get yourself a good MAME emulator and play this game that way. You can find this game online. Uh, it is an arcade game, so it is released for MAME. And although there's options that are added to the PlayStation 2 version, I mean, this version is pretty much the arcade version. Um, if you're not worried about tweaking the difficulty and, uh, you know, a range mode and, you know, things like that, by all means, download a MAME emulator and play it for free. And if you like it, then you might want to think about importing the PS2 and finding the game and things like that. But I will say, though, for anyone that's a fan of shoot 'em ups or you're a fan of imports or you're thinking about getting into import collecting or whatever the case may be, I, I mean, I probably buy more imports now than I do U.S. releases, which is kind of weird, but I strongly recommend you get a Japanese PlayStation 2. It is totally uh, worth it. I've actually broke mine twice, fixed it twice, um, it's a great tool if you're into shooters or imports, but yeah, uh, Escaluda, total A+, hidden gem, thumbs up in my book. Okay, guys, so Escaluda, you guys copping or what? Now, I feel like for the price, I mean, this game only goes for right around $50. I mean, if you go online or you go on eBay, you're going to see the, the copies going for $100, $170. I mean, prices that nobody's ever going to pay, and those listings are old, and they're going to stay on there. Nobody's going to buy them. When these do come up for sale, they sell for around 50 bucks, you know, sometimes cheaper. You know, I paid around that for my copy. And, you know, they come up often, so wait a week, maybe two, maybe three weeks, but eventually you will find your copy, and it's an awesome deal for what you get. It's a great shooter. It's a really good shooter on the PlayStation 2. Not all the great cave shooters are only on the Xbox 360. They are on other systems. Anyways, guys, I just want to say I really do appreciate the support I've been getting lately. Um, all the eBay stuff I've been jamming off. I hope everybody got their games. I've been really trying to hook people up with excellent deals. And, guys, I really want to say you know, thanks for watching and liking and sharing my videos. It's really been helping me out. And I really enjoy meeting everybody in the community. Anyways, guys, till next time, make sure you like this video. And if you're not subscribed and you like awesome video games, you might want to consider subscribing to the channel. Till next time, guys. Peace out.